everybody. My name is Jaya Adapa from the YouTube Partnerships team, and I'm really excited today to welcome Mark Vins from Brave Wilderness, who's going to be talking to us about his creator journey on YouTube. And with that, we're going to kick off with a video. My name is Mark Vins, co-founder of the Brave Wilderness YouTube channel. For the last 10 years, I've traveled the globe filming up-close encounters with the world's most incredible wildlife. These adventures have taken our audience to some of the most extreme places on our planet, where the front lines of conservation can be seen and experienced alongside the important work that is being conducted to rewild our planet and save countless species from extinction. While my journey as a filmmaker began with a pure fascination for telling stories about the natural world, it has evolved into a pursuit to spread awareness and educate millions of people about the state of our environment in the hope that collectively we can all do our own part to help solve the biggest challenge for our future, which is protecting our planet and the fragile ecosystems we all share and call our home. Silverback gorilla. Look at those teeth. You can see them thinking, observing us. I'm just completely in awe. And their curiosity of us is undeniable. It's like looking in a mirror an unmistakably human experience. Thank you so much, Mark, for being here today. Uh, for everyone who doesn't know Mark, Mark is an Emmy Award-winning uh, filmmaker, adventure and wildlife content. Uh, Brave Wilderness is one of the biggest channels on YouTube. Uh, that really profiles uh, wildlife and adventure with 4 billion views and 20 million subscribers. Uh, Mark built his career as a cinematographer and storyteller and has done a lot of great work uh, in recent years around his passion, passion for conservation uh, and is one of the leading ambassadors for rewild.org, which is Leonardo DiCaprio's charity around climate change and sustainability, and has done incredible work with uh, many different NGOs around the world to help protect our planet. So with that, I'd like to welcome Mark Vins to Talks to Google. Thank you so much, Jaya. What an intro. <laughs> well, I'm excited to talk to you, Mark, today. Uh, we've had conversations uh, about this in the past, but I'd love to know more about when you first started Brave Wilderness, what was your what was your impetus for starting it? What made you, what, what did, where did you think that this was gonna go as you started? Well, gosh. Um, could be a very long story, but I'll, I'll keep it as short as possible for the sake of time today. Uh, when we started Brave Wilderness, um, Coyote Peterson, my business partner, and I um, were driven by the uh, just the curiosity for nature and the passion we had for storytelling. Um, you know, back when we graduated college, which is where we met at Ohio State University, you know, there there wasn't a lot of opportunity to broadcast your creativity to the world. Um, from Columbus, Ohio. So we had a lot of projects going. We, you know, Coyote is a screenwriter uh, by trade. So we had some indie films going. Uh, we had a couple of different television concepts we were in development on, but we always had this nature presentation adventure show um, operating in the wing. And we got uh, a lot of no's from the industry, frankly, um, which really paved the way for us to where we are today um, in the sense of, uh, it kept us refining this idea of uh, telling wildlife stories centered around education, but also entertainment, uh, trying to draw a broader awareness to um, commonalities we all have interest in. We all want to know where, our, where we're from. We, you know, animals have stood the test of time, as we like to say. Uh, and, you know, when it came to uh, the opportunity that landed us on YouTube, it was after years of the industry really rejecting us and having the time to craft uh, what would inevitably be become the Brave Wilderness brand. Uh, and by the time we, we finally launched our YouTube channel in 2014, uh, we had years of R&D under our belt. So um, that gave us a major leg up for sure. But we also uh, looked at YouTube as an opportunity because uh, it was a place where we could freely broadcast our content to an audience that appreciated it. Um, whereas there was a lot of uh, industry folks who maybe didn't see the light yet. Uh, mm -hmm. The audience certainly did. And, and it was almost immediate in terms of the reception we had on the platform. And the growth was, I mean, history speaks for itself. It was tremendous. I mean, millions of subscribers in just a few years. It's 
still uh, overwhelming to think about sometimes. Could you have imagined in 2014 if someone told you where this channel would be? Did you have that in your mind of like, okay, we're gonna go, we're gonna be a creator in the stratosphere of the tens of millions, or was it just not foreseeable? Oh man, uh, I mean, the the number 20 million still feels unreal. Uh, 10 million felt surreal. Uh, we were hoping to to get to a million subscribers when we started. Uh, Coyote and I both worked normal jobs, as I, as we like to call them. Uh, you know, Coyote worked for an ink development company out of Central Ohio, and I worked for my family construction business uh, by day, and then by night and on weekends and on vacations, we were YouTubers. And you know, we had always looked at that million subscriber bar as like that standard of like if we could just make it there, maybe we have a shot at doing this as a as a full time profession, and maybe we can take this idea global. And uh, yeah, it was um, like most uh, creative endeavors, very humble beginnings, uh, really leaning on our family and friends for support, whether it's like sleeping on couches or borrowing vehicles or what have you. We, we really, uh, you know, made the most out of very little uh, in those early days, but it, it's what gave us, I think, that creative spark that appealed to our audience today. But reaching 20 million, I mean, I don't think anyone can predict <laughs> to get to this level. Um, and we certainly didn't do it on our own either. Like I want to um, be the first one to say like Brave Wilderness started with an idea of what it has become. It's the relationship with the audience and that back and forth communication that's unique to YouTube that has allowed us to grow in this tremendous way. So that's an, it's an interesting point that you were making about how the industry really wasn't ready in the beginning of this. And largely because that's a one-way conversation uh, communication, right? They create content and you know, then it's received by the audience, but it doesn't iterate based on that. So how have you guys benefited from audience feedback? Like what things have you, have they, I assume they challenged you in a, a lot of different ways. How, how have you incorporated that into the content? Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, I, I look at our YouTube audience as our as really our partners on Brave Wilderness. Um, of course, we have our partnership with YouTube and Google, which is a, a fantastic in terms of technology support. But when it comes to the actual creative and where those ideas come from, it's sourced from the those who want to consume it, those who have the interest. And like the the Sting Pain Index, for example, that Coyote climbed, which we're very famous for, uh, was a product of the audience sort of pushing us to go there. It was not a, a, a pursuit that we had originally intended to do, but the audience was so fascinated uh, by this idea of insect venom that this uh, entomologist in Arizona had written this crazy book called Sting of the Wild and that we should you know, make video content in line with that. Yeah, I mean, the YouTube audience is more of a reflection than it is um, you know, your, your client. You know, like a, a lot of, I think uh, at a traditional sense media looks to their subscribers or their readers or their viewers as um you know their consumer of who they're selling something to where on youtube it's it's very fluid it, we're very much in this with our audience and it, and it is a very um community sourced uh path forward and do you i'm curious what you and you're welcome to say uh other platforms <laughs> do it better if that's the case but i'm curious uh now that there are so many more platforms uh deeply engaged on video. What have you seen as the benefits and where do you think Brave Wilderness has opportunities both on YouTube and on other platforms? Uh, I mean, I don't mind saying that I, I don't think there's an equivalent um, in terms of the community um, association with video content in the world right now other than YouTube. Uh, certainly there are other streamers and video platforms emerging. Short form content, of course, is, is the uh, topic of the day. And uh, YouTube is doing great in that category, in my opinion, as well. But uh, in terms of where we feel valued as partners with the technology platform, uh, being YouTube and Google, uh, it, it just doesn't stack up elsewhere. Even though I don't want to say anything negative about our other partnerships outside of YouTube, because we do have those. And they're, they're great alternative resources to reach different audiences. I mean, it's just such a strong dynamic that YouTube has created with content creators and the people that consume the content. It's, it's very, it's a very deep relationship. And I noticed in your paper, you mentioned that you've actually increased the, uh, you've actually made 
longer form content over time, like you've started to invest in making because your audience and your watch time has reflected like this, you can tell a longer story, which is interesting because it's sort of in uh, converse to all the trends that we see around uh, short form content. So it's interesting that like Brave Wilderness has been uh, only expanding in uh, how much people are willing to watch and consume. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I attribute that to a couple of things. One, um, you have to make good stuff. You know, like if you want people to watch for a long time, you, you better bring the goods. Yeah. So uh, we really uh, pride ourselves on, on our uh, consistent quality that we, we bring to our audience every week. Um, so that that's on the forefront. But um, also just the evolution of content and stories, especially in the video uh, medium, is continuing to evolve at a rapid pace. I mean, you know, we started on YouTube. Uh, our sweet spot for content was about seven minutes uh, for runtime. Today we're pushing 15, sometimes over 20 minutes. Um, that's really cool for uh, a company that wanted to become filmmakers from the jump. So we're, we're all about this. <laughs> this yeah. is awesome. But uh, it, it also is interesting, the evolution of short form narrative and what that's doing uh, just to the structure of how to tell stories. Um, you know, I, I don't know if you, if you probably heard this cliche of like, it was a slow read at first, but eventually I got into it. Or, you know, mm -hmm. the, the movie starts a little slow, but eventually it really gets there. It's exciting. There's really not room for that <laughs> in, yeah. in today's video medium. Um, uh, you know, I think for us, we, we really live by the mantra, don't be boring. Like you have to be engaging and entertaining on the, the forefront of everything you do. Right. And I think what you guys do well, which is interesting, we, we talk about this a lot, that like for something to be entertaining doesn't mean that it can't be serious. So you you approach a lot of very serious topics. And one of the reasons that we've worked together is your work on climate change and conservation. Did did your interest in that cause start with Brave Wilderness or like just from the adventures that you were taking as a filmmaker and uh, spark that appreciation? Or was it something that you always sort of had in mind? Um, prior to starting the channel? It's something that is certainly has gained steam over the years. Um, experience is is really everything in, in terms of uh, my passion for uh, the climate and, you know, the environment and sustainability. Uh, just being on the front lines on so many different production trips and, you know, seeing what researchers are up against in terms of like, you know, sourcing funds and, and, and ways to continue their, their endeavors. Uh, we, we really felt connected to that because, you know, it was that conduit that allowed us to, to make a lot of the original brave wilderness videos. Um, on top of that, the growth that we've experienced and the, the platform that we have, um, been privileged to, 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 um, you know, be the stewards of right now, uh, because we look at Brave Wilderness as something that's going to grow well beyond our time. Uh, it's a responsibility. Um, it's, you know, the, the more uh, influential one becomes, the more responsibility you you need to have is the way we look at it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we still like to have really fun adventures. And, you know, I don't think anyone who's watched our content would look at us as, as risk adverse. We, we still like to, uh, to go for it, but um, we let we're, we're definitely more impassioned to do it in a way that creates broader impact and is inclusive to our global audience uh, to to help them come to the table and, and in their own way to solve this climate crisis that we find ourselves in. And so recently, uh, we had you as part of a creator cohort at COP twenty six in Glasgow, um, which was. A unique event, obviously, it's the UN Climate Conference, for those who don't know, and it was the first time that YouTube creators uh, participated in this event in a you know, in panels and in very meaningful ways. What, we, what were your biggest takeaways? What did you feel like you learned from that experience? Uh, first of all, it was an incredibly cool experience, and, and thank you, Jaya, for, for helping pave that path for, for uh, myself and the other YouTubers who got to go. Uh, it was eye-opening to be around so many influential people and uh, politicians and governments. And it was just like, it seemed like anyone who had a voice of significance in the, the climate space was there. And it was really uh, inspiring to, to get to meet many of them. The takeaway for me was uh, how 
little focus there was on storytelling and how um, how important it is to create the bridge to communities to understand these issues and how they impact their lives. And, and that's where I'm really excited um, with not only what Brave Wilderness is doing, but the, uh, the potential of platforms like YouTube and, and other um, open formats, because it's allowing those who for uh, many, many years, perhaps since the beginning of multimedia to, uh, to be empowered with the ability to broadcast their truth, their story, where they're from. And, uh, you know, Brave Wilderness started as two guys from Ohio who had a dream. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's now gotten to a place where we're able to empower others to join our, our causes and, and, and be excited about um, the community that we built on YouTube. But, you know, speaking of COP, back to that, uh, I think there's a lot of work to do in terms of connecting the world to these important causes. And uh, YouTube is uniquely positioned to be a, a game changing element in that. And when you when you talk about storytelling, I think uh, it's interesting because you were part of an originals project uh, last year uh, known as Brave Mission, uh, which profiled you at Barunga National Park. And I, I remember learning a lot from that just around not just the climate crisis, but also the very real human impact and uh, potential for violence and potential for harm to communities that is going on just to protect. Uh, nature. Could you talk a bit about uh, that experience overall and, you know, what what your biggest takeaways from the Brave Mission? Sure. Uh, you know, it, it. I think Brave Mission, for myself, I mean, I, I want to speak for everyone at Brave Owners because we've made so many projects at this point. Uh, for, for me, it's the most important video we've ever made. Uh, personally, for me, it was a transformative experience because, you know, someone who's filmed wildlife all over the world, uh, I don't want to say it's become routine. It's always exciting to see uh, a different species for the very first time and travel to new places. But um, I had always imagined uh, this wilderness of Central Africa and then the gorillas that I would one day encounter. What I didn't imagine was the profound impact the people there would have on me. Um, you know, seeing the uh, the communities, the the struggles that they endure every day, whether it's um, you know, the lack of resources or, um, the upheaval that is present there, uh, it's constant. Uh, but the fact that they, they are still living their lives and, and are very cheerful and they're the bright people. And it just was so just such a mix of emotions, um, and, and really incentivized me to not only do a great job on, on telling the story and, and to, and to bring in that cultural piece and that, that human element but also um, to go back and to do it again uh, and, and uh, to invite them into the stories more moving forward. That, that's something that we're really excited about and we're developing right now within Brave Wilderness is this idea of um, bringing other diverse voices to our platform as creatives. And in that project, you also, you worked with Leonardo mm -hmm. DiCaprio's Rewild, um, you also mm -hmm. with Jane Goodall. Uh, so, not not a um, not a bad list of incredible uh, people in this space. Who who would you want to collaborate with? Who else is on the list? Gosh, well, in the in the natural history sense, uh, David Attenborough. I, I would really love to to work with uh, Sir David Attenborough one day. Um, if if the universe will uh, provide the opportunity, I'm all in. Uh, but uh, in terms of other collaborations, I, I'd love to do more in terms of uh, working with other YouTube voices. Um, you know, I, I've uh, had some early communications with like, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Beast and some of the other uh, top YouTubers. And uh, I think it's really uh, an exciting opportunity for top creators to work together. We all have very unique perspectives and experiences, uh, but the, the audiences, um, that we built uh, can really move the needle in impactful ways if, if we can get some of these uh, impact stories to the forefront. And uh, it's an exciting challenge to take something as important as uh, protecting the oldest national park in Africa and putting it in front of a, a audience of millions who are there for the entertainment of a wildlife encounter and to make that resonate. Um, that challenge really invigorates me and and our team is really excited about bringing other voices into that equation. 
Well, this this week is uh, well, it's Earth Week, Earth Day. Uh, yeah. Coming soon, and you have participated in our YouTube campaign uh, around Earth Day, Non Fungible Planet, uh, which launched earlier this month. Uh, this was an eco con eco excursions uh, to all these different locations in the world, and I think what was interesting about that is it kind of followed your model, which is like exploration builds love and love, uh, you know, love for our planet, and then you know the desire to protect it. So what was your experience around this uh, campaign and exploration and adventure uh, being part of the story? The, the non-fungible planet campaign was very cool. I, I love the concept. Um, they actually sent me this cool globe. I want to call out very, very cool creator uh, swag there, but it shows that we went to Ecuador Yeah. Um, and it was my very first time uh, going to the country, uh, you know, it, it's iconic in its relevance to nature and conservation, specifically like, you know, the Galapagos Islands and the Andes and the, the Amazonian rainforest. So uh, tremendous opportunity that that you two presented on this. Uh, and I love that it draws attention to uh, wildlife and, and natural places like the rainforest of Ecuador. And it's for Earth Day. Uh, you know, it's, it's uh, cool that... Um, this moment every year is becoming a bigger and bigger focal point to uh, protecting the planet, drawing attention to places that um, are across the world that are important to all of us on a climate scale. And uh, yeah, we did what I like to say we do best on Brave Wilderness. We made a video that really captured uh, the essence of the environment and the maybe misunderstood animals that live there to have a little bit more appreciation for a place you might go yourself one day. What, what I think is interesting about your channel when I watch your content, it feels like the novelty never wears off for you or for uh, your uh, co-founders as well. Like, mm -hmm. You're still sort of marvel, even though you've been all over the world and seen almost everything, uh, it feels like there's still more that still strikes you. Is there something uh, on your short list that you're like, I want to film here and I don't know how I'm gonna make it happen, but I, it's, it's next or it, it will happen. Oh, there's a few of them. I mean. It, it, we we were were tremendously privileged to have the opportunity to work on a global level at this point. Um, from our humble beginnings, uh, catching snapping turtles in Central Ohio, it's a dream come true, really. Uh, but in terms of where I'd still like to go, oh my gosh, you know, I, I really would love to go to Antarctica. Uh, I would love to go to Greenland. Uh, we're going to the Galapagos later this year. That is a huge bucket list um, item. So I, I'm really excited to go visit that iconic place in the world. Uh, and, I, you know, I think more than anything, um, we want to go where the stories are. Uh, our audience tells us and, and informs us where they want us to go. And, and it's that pursuit, that that uh, inspiration for adventure that makes it exciting. And, and you reference the, uh, the enthusiasm. That's the easiest part of my job and our job at Brave Wilderness, it's very natural to us. I get excited when I see any animal. So uh, yeah, the the, uh, the cool thing about what we do is it's sort of a limitless uh, road ahead. And I think thinking about the, like the creator ecosystem, because it's interesting from your perspective, having been a YouTuber for seven years, uh, you're sort of growing up with YouTube. Like as an organization, we're growing up, we're learning ourselves, we're trying to uh, understand what's next and how do we evolve the business to make it you know, more uh, successful for creators. What do you think are the biggest differences from when you started out to now uh, in terms of all the, all the things that, you know, all the growth that you've seen on YouTube and you know, potentially it was maybe a little easier back then or harder in different ways a lot's changed. Seven years uh, is a long time in, in, in the space of, of being a YouTube creator. Uh, everything from, you know, content duration, as you mentioned earlier in our discussion to, uh, you know, the reach. I mean, YouTube has grown so much globally, um, even in that time. I know it was already global when we started, but it, it's, you know, we're seeing audiences really spring up all over the place. And the biggest difference for us is just the ability to reach more people uh, and to invite more people into the, the conversation. Uh, in terms of changes granularly, yeah, I mean, there's a, uh, it's fun, you know, like it, beyond the content itself, there's a lot of strategy that goes into 
uh, creating successful YouTube videos, you know, everything from the mechanics of titling and thumbnailing to uh, even the design of our stories has evolved, you know, you know, just little things, subtle things that maybe um, the average viewer may not recognize are drastically different to us, like where we place, you know, the, the hook of a video or the, uh, the resolution to act one is now in the middle of act four, you know, like it just, the different mechanics of it all keeps us on our toes. Yeah. And do you, well, I wonder also, we hear sometimes that, you know, starting out on YouTube is a little harder now because it's you know, mm. actually harder to break through than it was a few years ago. What advice do you have for creators that are still trying to start? I'm sure you have people stop you and say this all the time that they want to be a YouTuber, especially young people. Um, what do you, you know, what do you tell them? Yes, we do. We get the question often. The, uh, the honest, way to look at it is to not really worry about the success and the number of views on YouTube. The the thing to focus on is the content uh, and, and being uh, the best creator you can be and not waiting. You know, the biggest advice we give to anyone is to just start now. You'll figure it out along the way. Start now, start creating, be, pro be prolific. Uh, to be a YouTuber uh, on our scale, it's, it's a lifestyle. It, it, it's a consuming thing. So figure out what's going to be the most authentic version of your creative self and go for that because uh, you've got to be really comfortable in that, in that, uh, in that life <laughs> to keep going. Cause it, it is, uh, it is all consuming, but it's, it's so awesome at the same time. And uh, it's so cool to see all the other YouTube channels that we get to interact with uh, via the, the creator community, because everyone has their unique experience and, and uh, you know, road to where they've gotten. And something we've talked about a bit is uh, your objectives around helping develop other creators. And I think, especially around the climate issue, ensuring that it's representative. I mean, this is an issue that impacts every single one of us, uh, but we don't see a lot of content uh, that's truly global in nature. So a lot of the work you've done has been to try to highlight those stories. Um, but in terms of creator education or building community around that, what are the things that you think you can contribute most uh, now that you're a seasoned veteran of you? <laughs> I feel like I keep getting aged. <laughs> I'm, uh, I, I'm really excited about the opportunity to um, impart the knowledge we've acquired through our experience on YouTube. Uh, granted that the experience we had wouldn't work for every channel, but there's a lot of uh, up and coming creators out there and, and ways that we can mentor uh, the next uh, evolution of Brave Wilderness style content via other voices that I'm really excited about. And I'm specifically excited about adding that diversity element of voices from other countries around the world. Um, you know, we're still predominantly um, a US based audience, I'm still hovering just over, I think, 50%. Uh, we're growing the international presence, but, you know, there are so many unique perspectives that uh, that need platforms in places like Latin America, places like Africa, places like East Asia, places that are tremendously significant to um, the global environment and climate. And, and that's that's what's really on the forefront for us. Like that's going to be the next gen. Uh, I think you'll see coming from Brave Wilderness is uh, our ability to transfer the microphone to other people to tell their stories. And so now that we're at this 20, coming back to the 20 million subscriber thing, because it is a huge accomplishment. Um, what is what is next for you guys in terms of uh, filmmaking or content production? Do you see yourselves um, still trying to build a YouTube presence or continue to allow the launch pad around, uh, whether it be actually you know, moving over to filmmaking or production? How do you feel about those things coexisting in your future? I, I mean, we're we're still going to be getting after it <laughs> for quite a while, and uh, I think all of the above. We're, we're we're interested in opportunities to tell important stories that make a difference, um, wherever that venue may be. Uh, the places that that YouTube has taken us is invited us into rooms with different partners of different sizes and localities, and and that's super exciting to us to be able to partner. Um, with folks at like conferences like COP and uh, create those relationships that can that can take the impact of content to the next level. Um, but that's on the uh, the growth side of, of Brave Wilderness. Like I said, you know, 
we want to we want to empower our audience. We want to empower other people to do um, and to make these kind of stories that uh, create a positive uh, impact on the world. Because we we know very clearly we're only one channel. You know, we can't tell all the stories and issues like the climate crisis are so complicated and so multifaceted, multifaceted, depending on where you're looking at it. Um, it's going to require a global community of storytellers to to really encapsulate and create a momentum behind solving the problems. Um, you know, you can look to, you know, our culture in the United States where, you know, we're, we're largely focusing in on um, consumption and, you know, fossil fuels and, uh, you know, better practices of living that are more sustainable. But you can look across the world to Africa and they need green uh, development. They need sustainable energy just to cook and, you know, have clean water. So uh, it, it is it is so scaled in terms of the spectrum of what we need to accomplish. Uh, we need more people telling stories. And, we, and that's, that's our biggest goal moving forward. And I think uh, one of the hard things about the climate change issue overall is measuring the impact. So, you know, it's mm -hmm. such a big issue that people feel a little like, well, if me just turning off my lights is not going to make a difference. So it feels like you can't really, there's not much individuals can do. Uh, I, I'd love to um, make sure the audience knows about what you did in, at Barunga around the park rangers, because I think that was a very easily translatable impact that is not going to solve all the world problems in, uh, in this crisis, but was very tangible uh, in that regard in terms of how you use the funds to help the park rangers. I, uh, I just wanted to make sure I was accurate in my my math there. Being uh, talking to the glue, the Google audience, I want to be accurate in my data. Um, yeah, we we um, we wanted to quantify the impact in terms of the resources that we brought to the table uh, via that one video. And the the, the one video, you know, ha has now over seven million views. But more importantly, it raised over five hundred thousand dollars for Virunga National Park, which equates to over forty one thousand uh, Ranger days. That means there's um, a ranger in the field for 41,000 more days based on a single video. And while that is a snapshot of what happened there, it just um, shows the potential of a coalition of voices and what could be done if we are tackling uh, the problems that we're facing one story, one solution at a time. Well, 500,000 and counting. So we have uh, Googlers yeah. here uh, to donate to Rewild and support this. And finally, I wanted to ask you, Mark, about the paper that you wrote for Global Ecology and Conservation uh, Journal, which uh, I'm not 100% sure, but I think is probably one of the few uh, journal, journal articles, published journal articles of uh, a YouTube creator, especially around the social good cause. So we were really excited to uh, share that as well, but I'd love for you to tell um, the audience what what that journal, where you were looking to highlight uh, your work in Brave Wilderness in that article and kind of some of the highlights of it. Yeah, I mean, uh, the opportunity to be published in a journal like Global Conservation or Global Ecology and Conservation was, was really humbling. Uh, it was a big milestone for our brand um, in the scientific community to be officially published. Uh, and the subject matter being the outreach that's possible by creating content on platforms like YouTube being the focal point and the, you know, the billions of views and impact that's created, um, and how we've imparted scientific information through that vehicle, um, has drawn in a, a larger contingent of scientific, uh, researchers and people that we, we want to work with. Uh, it's been challenging over the years at times to, uh, you know, break those barriers in academia, in scientific research that, uh, you know, entertainment driven communities that are creating content on YouTube can play a big role in what they're doing. Um, but we're proving it every single week with the videos that we're launching, the educational outreach that we have in schools across the United States being distributed through Discovery Education. And uh, now the scientific research journal, um, which has actually already been cited in another paper, I uh, get updates on that uh, and has been downloaded by over uh, 3,000 uh, other researchers in the community. So uh, we, we are bridging the gaps necessary to be working in tandem with uh, the voices uh, that 
are bringing us the information that's going to help solve these problems. And that that is a key uh, partnership point that, that we're excited to continue establishing through papers like that. Well, I think that's one of the like really unique things about YouTube uh, channels, for sure. Several of the creators that you know, we had at COP and at TED last year, uh, bridging between education and entertainment and being taken more seriously by uh, the scientific community, especially around climate change communications uh, as well, I think is really critical. So uh, congratulations on getting that published. That was- in Thank you. Uh, you've had lots of things to say congratulations to in the last year, so <laughs> that's one uh, that I'll highlight. And with that, I will turn over to chat. I think there's a few questions from the audience. From Daniela, hi Mark, thanks for speaking with us. On a somber tone, I'm curious how you find ways to move forward in the conservation movement despite setbacks. How do you overcome doomsday feelings? That's a great question. There's a lot of doomsday feelings around uh, what we see uh, reported for the most part. Um, certainly, uh, thank you, Daniela, for the question. Uh, it's very easy to um, go down the rabbit hole of negativity when you look at what's happening to um, species around the world on many levels of extinction, many levels of um, threatened status. Uh, we had the video uh, actually coming out this Saturday um, that we worked on again with Rewild is surrounding the chytrid fungus uh, pandemic. It's basically wiping out amphibians in Latin America. Uh, and my answer is you just have to um, focus on the positive first. It's a lot more inviting to bring people to the conversation if you can highlight the beauty of something and inspire people to care and create that that passion as the first note. Um, there's plenty of time uh, in a story to get to the call to action and to get to the the critical um, piece that is, that is the problem. So uh, that's the, the uh, longest short answer, I guess, is that we, we always lead with positivity uh, because we find that um, if you can if you can really create hope on the forefront the solution to get there and keep it there is just that much more tangible well i think also it, at cop one of the uh interesting themes that uh we had talked about was you know, actually david attenborough had said um something about like you have simultaneously this massive issue that's facing, you know, nearly 7 billion people. And then you also have a group of people, uh, particularly young people who are wanting to find purpose and uh, want to make a difference in the world. And yet there's like a disconnect between those two things. We have a massive problem to solve and people who want to solve it, but it's sort of the climate anxiety and the, the way in which it's been portrayed in the media, which has made it, you know, very doomsday. And I think that's just tied people's hands in terms of what they feel like they can do about it. So. Absolutely. I mean, we, we have to change the, the uh, association with um, the climate crisis and conservation and those words. Uh, mm -hmm. That's why like words like rewild, it's, 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 a, it's a fresh start for mm -hmm. where we can take these uh, ideas and these stories. Um, we, have to, we have to take them to a place where they can be approachable and exciting and something people want to be part of. So, okay, next question. So from Marco, I love that Brave Wilderness combines learning and entertainment. For a few years, I've been, had the idea of creating a trading card game inspired by nature. There's a second part. I want players to have fun, learn, and give back by donating parts of profits to conservation orgs. In your experience, what are the, the most impactful organizations to support? Uh, I think for us, it's always been about uh, who we have the direct relationships with. We, we care, we want to support because we understand them more. Uh, now that we've gotten a, a lot larger in scale and, and the opportunities have grown, uh, you know, working with NGOs that have broader reach into those more specific, uh, you know, points of conservation or points of sustainability has, has been our solution because it, it is, each one of them are so unique. It's really hard to kind of, I guess, the cliche term is to cherry pick them. Uh, we believe in uh, focusing on the story as an individual, but you know, like an organization like Rewild, which I'm an ambassador for, has hundreds of outreach points 
um, that those uh, views and those uh, impressions are supporting. So my advice, which good luck on the trading card game, sounds cool. Um, I'd probably be a, a customer. Uh, you know, my advice to, to you is to just to kind of like go with what feels natural and, and uh, that'll probably lead you most of the way there. Next question. From Augustina, what do you think is the best way for YouTube to move the needle on conservation and sustainability? Promoting content, supporting uh, days like Earth Day, engaging, engaging the creator community. Those are basically um, one of the three options. Um, we, we're never sure which one is going to work, so we'd love to know <laughs> what you think. Got it. Uh, I'd say all of them. I think I think it has to be a holistic. Um, you know, we, we're we're very fortunate, Brave Wilderness, to to be um, of the size where we can actually like can can contribute and donate a lot of our time and, and resources to um, pursuits that are not focused on you know the balance sheet of the business or or making back our investment. Uh, so having partnership with YouTube on content, um, original content specifically is a big deal because not only does it help us connect um, on these issues uh, um, with our partnership, but it also brings other voices and, and organizations to the table just by having that officially there. Um, in terms of supporting Earth Day and supporting the content creator community, uh, that's something that uh, is going to take a sustained effort because right now creating, you know, a profitable or viable YouTube channel, you don't, you don't really think of conservation as your forefront, you know, narrative. Uh, we're trying to flip the script on that and to, to prove that uh, you can have sustainability as the backbone of your content and use the entertainment vehicle that is the forefront to bring people to these issues. And, uh, you can actually do that on nearly every single channel that exists on, um, that exists today. Have you looked at because um, there's another area as well around you know filmmaking itself it is quite um, carbon heavy in terms of its overall footprint, and there's been a lot of organizations that are trying to clean that up in the film industry as well. Is that something you guys have started to explore for your filmmaking practices? Absolutely. Actually, we've had. <clears throat> conversations about this. I actually had a conversation about this this morning uh, with my team. Uh, and, you know, that's where, again, YouTube really shines because you're able to produce really high quality content by utilizing the latest technology that can compete with the standards that you see in cinema and on television with a very dynamic team. A lot of times when we're on productions, we're two or three people. Um, so, you know, where you have fleets of vehicles and airplane loads of gear and like, you know, individuals traveling around the world for some of these productions, you just don't need it with the technology that exists today and platforms like YouTube. And uh, we're, we're breaking more barriers there as well because of the standards that have been created historically in entertainment, um, where you need to have all these delineated roles. Yeah. You can actually be a lot more efficient um, and YouTubers um, not only ourselves, but most top YouTubers are proving that um, with every single video they make. Well, and also someone pinged me a question. They didn't put it in the chat, so I'll ask it. How sure. did COVID impact the channel, your overall production timelines, and uh, what workarounds did you find around uh, that situation, especially when your job is to be traveling and in the field uh, a lot of the time? On the production front, uh, the pandemic, um, like uh, most businesses, uh, was very, very challenging. Um, not being able to travel internationally um, for a while, uh, you know, not being able to work in teams functionally <laughs> in the field was was really hard. I, I, I made a lot of self-produced videos where I was like using 360 cameras and, you know, different selfie video techniques, thanks to K Casey Neistat for that. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, we... Um, we, we waded through it and, you know, persevered, persevered like most uh, businesses were forced to do. Um, luckily, there were a lot of um, silver linings to the pandemic for Brave Wilderness, being that uh, a lot of folks were watching YouTube. So our viewership and our library went up and that really helped us sustain that duration of non-production. But we really never missed an upload. We just had to evolve and quickly pivot um, into a dynamic that was allowed within the rules. Uh, but it, I won't lie to you, it was a challenge. <laughs> well, I think 
Yeah, absolutely. But I think it's it's interesting that we saw that with a lot of catalog content that because mm -hmm. leadership had gone up, people were discovering things that were five, six years old and they were, you know, getting legs, which is uh, definitely an unusual thing to suddenly happen uh, thanks to the circumstances of the situation. Well, but, yeah. Have you heard the saying where like, what did you do during the, the start of the pandemic? I, I finished Netflix. <laughs> have you ever heard anybody say they finished YouTube? No, because you, yeah, no you can't YouTube. finish. You can't finish YouTube. So that's yeah. great. That's a great thing for us. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> very good point. I definitely yeah. finished Netflix during the pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> I think we have one last question. Uh, let's see from Carol. Hey, Mark. Much love from the YouTube Kids team. My question is silly. How do you and Coyote handle touching all that gross stuff, aka bugs? And you're like on Fear Factor. That's, that's, <laughs> that's a good question. I like some things. I'm like I can't. I just freak out. Yeah. I mean, thank you, Carol, for the question. Uh, I grew up catching, you know, slimy, muddy creatures like in my backyard in Ohio. So like digging up earthworms and toads and frogs and turtles and coyote was the exact same. So I, I mean, for us, it's it's uh, very true to form. But, you know, with the early days of Brave Wilderness, I, I remember encountering my first rattlesnake or some of the more dangerous wildlife that we worked around, like brown bears and um, crocodiles, you know, Mario, our wildlife, uh, biologist as a crocodilian researcher by trade. So taking us out there at night surrounded by crocodiles was pretty crazy. Um, so there, there definitely has been some, some growth requirement, both on the, the bravery front and the learning front for ourselves. But, uh, yeah, it, it's just fun. <laughs> that's the, that's the best, that's the best, uh, answer I can give to like how we overcome it. It's just fun. That's amazing. I, yeah, I, I couldn't do it even, I could, some of those I can't even watch, but it is amazing that people can do it and are so comfortable with it. And yeah, that's, but I guess to your point, you grew up in that uh, world, especially if you're, if you're used to that, definitely. Well, I think that's all the questions for now, but I did want to say how proud we are of everything uh, Brave Wilderness has accomplished. Uh, you guys are really a great example of success on YouTube and building a business on YouTube. So, uh, you know, thank you so much for joining us and you know, talks at Google, uh, really is to highlight some of the amazing, uh, things that people are doing out there and, you know, sharing that with the Google community. So if you have anything else you want to share, uh, please do. Thank you, Jaya. Um, and thank you to everyone who helped, um, having me on today. Uh, it's such an honor to speak to the Google community. Um, so grateful for, all the technology and the hard work that takes place every single day to make platforms like YouTube exist. Um, so thank you to all of you for um, giving me the opportunity to do what I love. And, uh, you know, we are looking to continue to forge um, the front lines of what's possible um, through entertainment and uh, content creation. And if there's anyone out there who's, who's watching or listening to this, um, whether it's live or via recording that would love to to join us, um, you know, contact at Brave Wilderness, drop us a line, let us know what you're working on, uh, whether it's something that that we can plug you into or something that we can work on together. We are looking for um, greater partnership moving on now and into the future. Amazing. Thank you so much, Mark, again, for your time. Uh, we'll be we'll be seeing each other again, probably for the next COP or the next uh, climate related, uh, you know, creator driven events that we are hoping to do this year. So thank you again for all you do to anyone that's watching uh, Googlers that want to contribute to rewild, uh, just go to go slash give and make sure uh, you help support a lot of these wonderful projects that Mark's been doing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone. Thanks, Jaya.